coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at some big changes that Microsoft has made recently to widgets that actually make this feature worth using. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. everybody and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt and I'm back home in Pennsylvania. How exciting. And this week I thought we could talk about widgets again because Microsoft has made some big changes to this feature in Windows 11 that actually make it kind of interesting. So if you skipped out on widgets in the past because of some of the problems, it might be time to take another look. So the basics are the same. I'm gonna, I'll just bring up widgets so we can take a look at that. We have a widget board that is accessible via a widgets button in the taskbar that's over in the far left of the taskbar by default. There can be notifications at the top. You've got this column with actual widgets in it. And then on the right side, the right two thirds of it is a news feed that comes from Microsoft Start, which is a collection of really low quality content and ads. <laughs> so, uh, which is one of those reasons why people might, you know, skip out on widgets. I like widgets mostly for the little uh, weather display you get down here. Um, but there's some behaviors that you might want to change. Um, even if you want to keep that there, I don't like the mouse over feature, for example. So you just mouse over it by mistake or on purpose. The thing pops up. You can, you can fix that kind of thing. Um, and of course, all of the problems remain. Uh, it forces you to use Microsoft Edge. So if you've chosen another browser, click on one of the items in the widget board, whether it's a widget or a news uh, tile or card it will open in Microsoft Edge, right? Um, like I said, the start feed is low quality. All of the content is actually hosted by Microsoft at an MSN or Microsoft website, not the original. So even if it's a CNN story, you're not going to CNN.com, you're going to the Microsoft Start, one of the Microsoft Start, uh, start websites. And they do that so they can track you and, and show you their ads and all that kind of stuff. And there is not a lot in the way of third party widgets. Um, that's still true. You can add widgets. Most of these are Microsoft widgets. There's a couple of third party widgets in here, Spotify, Facebook Messenger. That's about it, actually, <laughs> at least that you see in this list. You can get more from the store, but really there aren't too many. And the ones that are not for Microsoft, by and large, are fairly low quality other than the couple you can see here. So what has changed? A um, couple of things. Uh, first of all, you can remove this Microsoft Start feed, which is actually really kind of nice. Um, you can configure this thing in different ways. Uh, and then coming, there's a Moment 5 update we're going to talk about in a future episode. There's some further changes coming to widgets as well that will make it even better as we move forward. But first, let's start with the basics. So the settings interface has changed. Um, it's this new uh, look thing here. And there's a couple of new things going on here. One, uh, actually, this isn't new, but this is something you might want to turn off is notifications. You, there's two notification settings here. I just turned both of these off. This keeps the weather down in the corner, but it doesn't interrupt you with other things, right? So the stock market goes up or down or whatever the types of things that might happen, you'll get little uh, notifications down there. So you can turn that kind of stuff off. Um, the other big one, of course, is this hover feature. So turn this off. And now when you hover over this, it doesn't come on. I tend to move the mouse cursor by mistake, it will fly over here, widgets comes up, blocks what I'm working on, I can't stand that. So this kind of gives you the weather forecast without any unintended pop-ups or notifications. So that's kind of nice. But the big one, and this is the one they added recently, is this ability to show or hide feeds. So by default, Microsoft Start is the only feed. You can actually turn it off. It will have to kind of reboot the app. And when it comes back up, what you get instead of all those news stories are just the widgets. So that's really neat. There is also this capability in here where you can uh, turn on other feeds, uh, technically. Uh, and if you, But if you click on the Microsoft Store link there, what you'll see is there's only this one thing. And this is where the news, uh, the Microsoft Start feed comes from. So um, every... Uh, widget, every uh, store based add on for widgets is actually an app. And so it's the Microsoft Edge web browser that's providing that feed in the background. Um, so right now there is no way to add a third party feed, but maybe that's something that will come in the future. We'll have to wait and see uh, if that ever happens. Uh, 
So in this view, what you don't get is the ability to display this thing full screen, but you do get the four same default widgets that you always see, although they're normally in a single column. And from here, you can go and add more widgets. I'll just add a, maybe a Spotify widget. And as before, that widget is pinned on top of or in front of, if you will, the other default widgets, right? And you can see that this thing has a little pin icon on it indicating that it is pinned. You can resize this thing. Um, I'll just put it back the way it was. If you unpin it, it will go away. Interestingly, the default widgets can be pinned, <laughs> which allows you to do a couple of different things. Um, one of them should be the ability to reposition them, which you can't actually do unless you pin them first. And of course, you could resize them, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if you're actually going to use widgets, it's worth going in here and just pinning all of them, right? Um, because that gives you the freedom to move these things around as you will. You might want, um, <laughs> if I could figure it out, you might want the, um, uh, the photo uh, widget to be at the top or whatever. And you can, again, change the size. Um, Third-party widgets, like I said, not too great. You can find more widgets in the store. It, it drops off in quality pretty quick. Uh, Facebook, Messenger, Spotify, and then yikes. And it's just, this is the type of stuff we used to see in the Windows 8 Windows Store, remember back in the day, a bunch of mostly low quality, not all of them. Uh, some of these things like battery, battery meter, I believe is a, uh, yeah, some of this stuff is actually pretty good, but it's not, these are not high quality, or I should say uh, top tier content providers or anything like that. So um, still early days on widget extensibility, but it's just a nice thing now because when, when I think of widgets, I, I think of seeing widgets and now that's what this thing is. Um, and maybe someday we'll have the ability to put them on the desktop again, like we used to be able to do back in the day and like Mac users can use today, uh, can do today. Um, but still a major step forward, not having to deal with the Microsoft start feed. Um, as before, if, if for some reason you wanted Microsoft start and I'm having a hard time imagining that, but maybe you do, um, when you do leave that enabled, you get the ability to go full screen and you can customize this, right? Um, there are, there are ways to go in and say, well, I don't want uh, this particular news source, or you can manage your interests and try to customize this to some degree. I can tell you two, two and a half, three years, whatever we're into the windows 11 era, I have spent a lot of time trying to customize this thing and I can't keep out the low quality garbage. So it, you're better off, I think, just not using it. So we'll, we will look at widgets a little bit in a future episode because there, like I said, there are some other changes coming. They're not here yet, um, but there's more changes on the way. To me, this is the big one. So uh, Windows, 11, or, yeah, Windows 11 came out in 2021. Uh, so here we are years later, I think. We're finally where we wanted this feature to be from the beginning. Uh, not perfect, but much better than it used to be. And hopefully in this state is more usable by more people and something you might want to take a look at again. So I hope you found this useful and interesting. We'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash HOW. And thank you everyone for watching, especially Club Twit subscribers. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.